In a previous video, I had developed a multiplication test, and, and in that, uh, using Python, and in that program, I had asked the user to put in how many problems that they were going to solve, and then they would solve the problem, and the, the program would let them know how many they got correct. Um, this is actually a very similar program. However, for, for this one, we made some modifications to make it a time test. So a lot of the code is going to be similar, but we do have a timer in that now. So I wanted to show you how the program actually runs. So you can see over here that it's asking how many questions are on the test. And we'll just do something very simple, like two questions. And then we'll ask how many seconds are for the test. And we can put in, say, 10 seconds. And then it'll ask the questions. So this is going to be 12. And let's say that I make a mistake and I put in 23 for this. So you can see here, I, I, I don't get a message that I ran out of time, but I only got one of them correct. So it tells me how many I got correct and what the score is. So let's rerun it and then have it actually run out of time. So again, it's saying how many questions are on the test. And we're going to put five questions and five seconds. And I'm going to take my time. I'm going to put in three for this. And then maybe I'll put in a wrong answer for this. And then my five seconds was up. And so it told me that um, the total number of correct answers is one and that my score was 20% because I only got one out of five correct. And it also tells me here that I ran out of time, which it didn't tell me on the last one because I actually answered all of the questions in time, just didn't answer them all correctly. So now I wanted to show how that code, um, uh, how this was actually coded. And again, a lot of this is going to be similar to my previous uh, video, which by the way, I'll link to. So here I used a random module and from the random module, I import the random integer uh, method. And I've used that in order to get these random integers to populate my list. But now I'm also going to import the time module. Uh, I still ask the user the number of problems, right? And that's uh, saved in this variable called numprobs. And I make these two lists because I want to do an x times y. So I make two empty lists to, st to start. And then I use these for loops. And in each one of the for loops, I'm for however many number of problems they put in, I'm getting those random integers. And I'm just appending it to the list. So what I'm going to do is populate an X list and a Y list. Okay, And here you can see this is the printout of the X and the Y list. Okay, And then these were the for loops that I used to populate that list. And then this is what I used to print the list. So now I have uh, two variables that I initialize, the num correct, which is the number of correct problems, and then also the count, which is the count of how many problems have actually been answered. And those are helpful because I use a while loop uh, for this program. Then I asked for the test time. All right, so how many seconds are for this particular test? All right, so I'm asking the user to put in the seconds that they have for the test. And then I'm going to use the time module. And I get the beginning time, which that's not going to be updated throughout the simulation or throughout the running of this program. And I get the beginning time by just using this uh, command, this time.time. .time. And then I also need to know what time it is now. And that actually will be getting updated throughout the running of this program. So this is now time equals time dot time. Okay. Then I have my while loop. And so while my count is less than the number of problems, I'm going to run everything that's within this while loop. And so my count was zero. So obviously I have, if I put in two or five for the number of problems, then um, this is okay. It'll actually then simulate everything that's in the while loop. And I use my for loop like I did in, in the previous uh, program that I had written in order to be able to uh, compute the answer for each individual problem, but also then ask the user for their answer to that problem. But by, before I go into that, I am going to have an if statement. And it says if now time minus beginning time is less than the test time, 
it means that there's time remaining. So I'm going to continue to update now time and then subtract that from the original time, which was the beginning time. And if there's still time left, meaning that it was less than the number of seconds that was input by the user, then we can compute the answer for that particular iteration. And then we can also print out what the problem is. All right, so this is where we're, we're um, computing the what the answer is. By the way, this is where that if statement was, if now time is less than the beginning time. I'm sorry, if now time minus beginning time is less than the test time. And then here is where we print out what the problem is, and we ask for what the answer is. So you can see that that's what's over here in our simulation. And then we just do the simple if statement. If the answer is equal to the test question, then increment the number correct by one. If it's incorrect, then the number of correct will stay the same. And then what we do is since this question is now done, then the count is going to be equal to the count plus one. And then I now update this nail time. And then it will go back up uh, through the next iteration through the for loop. But again, before it asks this, it will then uh, compute now time minus beginning time to see if I still have time remaining. So one thing about the way that this is coded is that once it gives you a problem, it, it'll give you as much time as you need to answer that problem. So it only check the time to see if it's going to give you another problem. But if you've run out of time, then I just set this count to a very, very high number to make sure that it's going to be greater than the number of problems. And then that'll completely get me out of the while loop. So there's two ways to get out of the while loop. One is to run out of time and have your counter set to a very high number. But the other one is to answer all of the problems, which means that your count is not less than the number of problems anymore. And then that will also get you out of the while loop. And then the rest of the code should be pretty straightforward. So I want to put in a, a message that they've run out of time, if that is the case. So then I say, if the count is equal to this very, very large number, then I am going to print that you ran out of time. Um, and then regardless of whether or not you ran out of time or not, you're going to get the total number of correct answers is um, the number correct. And then we're also going to print out what the score is as a percentage. So I hope you found this helpful about um, how to use a timer in Python for a time multiplication test. Um, if you want to know when more of these types of videos are going to come out, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching this one.